The spiral tool in Illustrator creates spirals based on three measurements, the radius, decay, and number of segments. And once I understood what those numbers meant, I began to get a lot more use out of this tool. So here I've drawn three spirals so we can make some comparisons. For each of these spirals, as you can see, I have the measurements listed up here at the top. Each spiral has a one inch radius, but the one on the right is so much bigger than the other two, so clearly the radius isn't the only number determining the overall size of the spiral. I'll turn on a layer here where I've drawn some one inch squares in green and they're positioned right over the first segment of each spiral to highlight the radius measurement, one inch for each spiral. So imagine this curve here inside the square as a quarter of a circle and I'll just turn on a layer here where I've drawn some circles to make it even more clear. So this is a two inch diameter circle with a one inch radius and the same circle is implied here in the other two spirals as well. So this is what the radius measurement of the spiral is referring to. I'll just turn the circles off. The radius is the measurement of the first arc or first segment here and you can see if I select it from anchor point to anchor point the first segment of the spiral, just this arc here, has a one inch radius. So the radius measurement only refers to that first segment. The decay, the next measurement, is what acts on that radius to create the overall size of the spiral. You'll see the first spiral has an 80% decay, and so does the second spiral, but the third spiral has a decay of 90%, and that's what makes it larger overall. So here's how decay works. I'll go back to this one inch box here that corresponds to the radius measurement and double click on the scale tool and I'm going to reduce this square by 80 percent and hit copy and now I'll just position it over the second segment in this spiral and you can see it fits perfectly within this box. The second segment is an arc that is 80 percent of the first segment so each subsequent segment in this spiral is reduced or decayed by 80 percent. I'll scale the second box again by 80 percent make a copy and drag it into place and there again the next segment fits perfectly within and this rate of decay continues all the way to the last segment here in the center. I'll turn on the circles once again so we can look at this. So decay is the number that's making the spiral turn inward here becoming smaller than the circle implied by that one inch original radius. The first spiral decays at 80 percent and so does the second, and you can see they're turning inward at the same rate. The spiral on the right, however, decays at 90%, so the second segment in this spiral is only 90% of the first segment, so this spiral turns inward less with each segment than the first two spirals. If I scale the one inch box here by 90% and make a copy, It fits right over the second segment here. And the next segment is 90% of the second segment, and so on. So you can imagine if we went up to 100% decay, the spiral wouldn't turn inward at all. It would just be a circle with a bunch of overlapping segments. So the last measurement of the three is the number of segments. And I'll just turn these other layers off so we can see this better. On the first spiral, there are 10 segments, and you can count from anchor point to anchor point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 segments here. The only difference between the first spiral and the spiral in the middle is that there are 20 segments on this spiral, and they just keep adding on here 10 more little segments here in the center. If I copy this spiral and make it a different color, and align it just behind the first spiral. It's easy to see those extra segments are just spiraling into the center and that's the only difference between the first two spirals. Finally, the spiral on the right. It has the same number of segments, 20, just like the spiral in the middle, but because it's decaying at a rate of 90%, it's moving inward at a slower rate than the other two spirals. And that accounts for this spiral's larger size overall and it would need more than 20 segments for it to curl all the way into the center here. 
So that's basically the radius, decay, and number of segments. And you can play around with the numbers and try different combinations to see what works for you. I find decay rates of around 65 to 85 percent work the best for decorative spirals and for what we're doing in this class.